UFOs. So he's going to come on, I think, right oh. around the 15th or 17th of uh, of uh, January, uh, talking about you know UFOs. Because I, you know, just because the month is uh, over, I'm not going to give up talking about UFOs because I do feel they are here among us. Oh yeah, this is uh, there is so much uh, stuff going on so quickly here as far as this uh, disclosure thing is going on. Uh, uh, it's it's hard to keep ahead of the curve here with all the things that are happening and all the new television productions that are coming down the road, you know, with Project Blue Book, you know, coming out uh, in on January 18th on the History Channel. Um, these, these shows like the Paranormal Truckers, you know, that they're talking about out of Storyville Entertainment and New York City. Uh, it's just the beginning of a huge wave of of uh, interest and maybe disclosure, I think. Well, I think so. Steve Bassett thought it was going to happen this year. He's pushed it off uh, because of what's going on in co- the Congress and the Senate. I mean, we got a major problem going on with uh, our, well, not just our economy, but the state of affairs in our country right now. I mean, it's getting scary. And he doesn't feel, you know, it's going to be anything this year because of what's going on right now. I mean, everybody's trying to, you know, uh, keep us from going down the drain. And a lot of people don't realize it. Also, did you notice that NASA today said that we are going to be planning to return to the moon a lot sooner than you and me think? (laughs) Isn't that interesting, you know? Uh, first of all, they said uh, it was too expensive to go back, uh, and uh, now they're saying they need to get there sooner. Isn't that interesting? Well, they don't want have they don't want Trump to have the money to build the the fence, so they want their they want their cut to get us back on the moon, and that's more logical, isn't it? To go to the moon first and see how long we can survive uh, before we go to Mars. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I don't know, you know they they. Uh, they're, they're not telling us a lot of stuff here. I mean, I, I a lot of us, you know, already know that there are bases on the backside of the moon, and we've probably been to Mars many times for decades. And so it's real interesting that they're now bringing this stuff out in the mainstream media because, um, you know, you never would have heard these this kind of talk even a year ago. They wouldn't be talking about going to the moon or uh, whether we could survive in space or on another planetoid or anything like that. So very interesting stuff is coming down very quickly here. Oh, yeah, it sure is. Now, how's my audio on your end? Am I, do I have any echo or anything, or do I sound normal? No, not at all. You're sounding uh, very uh, rich and very crisp. I am very rich. I won... I won uh, no, I'm not going to say. I was going to say I won a uh, two dollars on a lottery ticket, but hey. Uh, also, you know what? We need both to put our heads down, close our eyes, and say rest in peace to the space force forever, because it looks like it's not going to go anywhere through Congress. You know, they don't want to fund it, and and then there's bickering going on right now with the Air Force. They figured, well, why would we want to create a space force when we got the Air Force? And then the the Marine Corps said, well, wait a minute. You know, we have planes. We can have a Space Force. And then the Navy had to get into it here recently and say, well, wait a minute. Why can't we have the Space Force? And Congress is basically saying, hey, I don't care who has it. We're not going to fund it. (laughs) Yeah. And, of course, you know, the, the whole theory is, is that they've had a secret Space Force for decades and uh, they don't want to tell us about it, let alone let us know where the funding is coming from, because that's kind of controversial itself. So um, uh, it's it. You know what I always think it's it's the stuff we see on the mainstream media is basically a smoke screen to kind of keep us uh, busy, you know, and arguing amongst ourselves, you know, on both sides of the fence or all all sides of the fence. And in reality, they're just uh, moving ahead quite quickly, I believe, with their uh, agendas in the background. And, uh, you know, there's no way that uh, that if they actually c- captured craft back in the 1940s that they didn't use some of that retrieve technology 
uh, to get us out there in space and beyond, I'm sure. Well, you know, the latest thing on Facebook and on uh, on uh, Twitter and all these other Instagram, all this stuff, they are slamming Bob Lazar, saying, you know, you know, that he's a fake. And it's, it's really gotten heavy here lately. Regardless, like George Knapp, he was on Coast to Coast the other night. You know, George uh, Knapp, you know, oh, boy, we got another phone call. Hang on here. And let's see what we got here. Okay. Okay, you're on Night Dreams Talk Radio. Who do we have? Well, we just the, just Michael hanging out. Oh, let's see. There's nobody there. Okay, well, they probably got scared and hung up. I'm trying to figure out where a one two zero area code is. That, that boy. Oh, it, isn't that interesting? Yeah, one two zero. Yeah, one two zero, not C T O. But anyway, but I got to ask you a, a real big question here. Yeah. Okay, here you were a. Superior Court Judge Pro Tem. Uh, you are a practicing lawyer in the state of Washington. Uh, you've been involved right. in the entertainment uh, uh, business. Uh, you're very well known uh, with a lot of attorneys. Believe me, I've checked you out. Now, I got to ask you a question. <laughs> what happened? One day, did you just wake up from a, a dream and said, I am going to form a group of people dedicated to to find proof that UFOs and aliens exist. Did you, how did that come to you, my friend? Well, you know, you're, you're talking about, of course, the, the UFO I team that I'm the founder and director of. And, uh, you know, to tell you the truth, Gary, that has just been, uh, you know, recently within the last couple of years that uh, I had actually got a group of some of my old researcher friends and um, Skywatch buddies together to kind of form a formal group because we've, many of us in the group, uh, including myself, have been involved in this field for a whole long time. Well before I even went to law school, um, I was into, you know, the whole idea of the paranormal list. The UFOs just fascinated me. Um, even uh, when I was in uh, Sunday school in church, you know, I was always the kid raising my hand asking, all the questions about the Old Testament and, and Ezekiel's wheel and, you know, all the different uh, things that were kind of UFO related in the Bible. And um, so when I went to law school, um, I basically, you know, wanted to get a degree so I could, uh, it, to tell you the truth, I just wanted to work for myself. I was tired of working for other people, you know, uh, in my uh, younger adult life. And so I decided to, uh, kind of work for myself and always have been as a general practice attorney in the state of Washington. But, um, you know, the whole idea of uh, once I got to become a lawyer and uh, just learn the craft, I realized very quickly that there was a whole lot of help I could um, help, uh, use in dealing with some of my friends who have been in to this field for a long time. Uh, Probably the best example would be uh, my old friend Peter Davenport from the National UFO Reporting Center. And Peter and I met uh, very shortly after he uh, took over the reins for the uh, New Fork agency and uh, received all the pilot reports and all the UFO civilian reports from around the country and various, uh, you know, FAA towers and uh, law enforcement agencies, they all funneled their uh, UFO witnesses to Peter. And uh, he uh, just needed some legal issues, uh, you know, resolved uh, forming the uh, entity that he's using to do business under. Uh, we purchased, uh, help him purchase an undisclosed Nike missile site. Okay, uh, now, where... <laughs> I, that... Why did he buy it? I mean, you know, without giving out anything that you can get in trouble for. But, I mean, yeah, what was yeah. his reasoning to buy it? Well, you know, I don't think it's a, uh, an a, uh, attorney-client uh, privilege breach at all just to uh, uh, say what he tells everyone, uh, that he uh, was initially uh, thinking when he moved from Seattle, uh, he wanted to get out to a uh, different part of the country. And he thought it would be really nice to have a uh, impenetrable 
uh, bunker, basically, uh, that he could uh, safeguard all of his, uh, you know, database and the computers and all the things that he needs and uh, keeps updating for the uh, New Fork uh, website. Uh, so it would it would be something that uh, obviously would be planning for the future in uh, you know making sure that all that data is preserved uh, for posterity uh, even beyond his uh, helm at the uh, as the director of the of the center. So uh, that was initially his thought, and uh, of course he's got the the underground uh, huge what is it, about an eighty foot deep. Um, you know, down in the bunker of this uh, blast-proof, by the way, uh, supposedly nuclear blast-proof uh, Nike missile site where he uh, is able to um, do whatever he wants with it. He hasn't been able to remodel it yet to be able to use it as the, uh, the impenetrable, you know, bunker that he wants to. But that's uh, kind of one of his goals that he's uh, seeking down the road, along with some of the other stuff that he's always been interested in pursuing, like his uh, uh, passive radar system that he has patented uh, that could actually de- uh, determine uh, UFOs in close proximity uh, to various uh, triangulated radio station signals. So that's kind of what his his idea is with his passive radar, and that's Lord, right up off, your neck of the woods. Bounce off the, the spacecraft. Yeah, exactly, and you have uh, more than one, uh, you know, FM, AM tower or whatever, and you're able to pinpoint exactly where those things are uh, just with, um, it's not it's not actually actual radar, but he calls it passive radar by using the, uh, the radio towers. Uh-huh, so the RF power output. Maybe that's what it is. You know, I'm not a real techie guy, but he, he really is. Matter of fact, uh, he was able to get um, someone in the CIA interested in his project, and they actually called him up and confirmed with him. This was not a retired CIA guy. This was a guy who was actually working in um, the CIA at the time, called him up and um, kind of went through the details of his uh, whole idea and his white paper that he has created, which is on his website, by the way, National UFO Reporting Center. You can read all about passive radar. And um, the guy at the CIA says, well, this will work. I just want to let you know. So <laughs> That is kind of scary right there. Now, I got, kinda... I, I got to ask you another question. Have you been in his underground bunker? You know, I haven't been there, but I have taken, and you anybody can take, a uh, underground uh, tour on uh, video. If you uh, Google the term Peter Davenport, uh, Nike missile site, or underground bunker, uh, a couple of, or at least one reporter from the uh, uh, local newspapers or video company uh, news came out and did a really cool little walkthrough for the whole thing, and he takes you right through from the, uh, you know, you're, you're driving out in the middle of the wilderness, uh, sagebrush, basically, I'm not going to pinpoint where it is, and all of a sudden, there is this uh, large corrugated uh, tube that you just walk into, it's very nondescript, and you go down and down and down to these large oh, uh, sliding uh, steel walls that you have to unpadlock and get inside, and then uh, you get to go into the inside the structure with this tour. Uh, very fascinating. I mean, I can't imagine uh, being in the military uh, back in the '60s, the '70s, <coughs> and uh, basically living down there in these bunkers for uh, probably a week at a time or more. And uh, if uh, they're on alert, of course, they're there longer. It was, it's quite a place. Well, I know my brother back in, I would say that had been in the sixties. Uh, that's where he would every other weekend, he would be in a bunker, you know, a Nike. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, he, he told me it was kind of like, yeah, not that big, but you know, that the main control room of it was not that big, I should say, but, uh, yeah. 
you know, this is the whole fact of it, you know, above above it, people didn't even know it existed except the people that lived around it. I mean, if you drove by oh. it, you'd never know it was there. 